Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in Creo 9, Deep Dive Part 2, Simulation and Analysis. My name is Carolina Haig, and I will be your host for today's event. And presenting today will be Mikko Hinkanen. For the webinar on my behalf as well. Today, I try to run through the What's New in Creo 9 in the simulation and analysis side of it, and uh, show a few demonstrations on the live software as well. So today's topics are kind of a general introduction to Creo simulation environment, and then we go through the let's say four different applications and some side notes about Creo, about what's possible today on the welding side. So if we think about what kind of a simulation applications we do have at the Creo parametric environment or kind of a Couple to that one. We have classically Creo Simulate and Creo Simulate Advanced license in there. But then on the other hand, we do have a Creo Simulation Live application, which comes with the two different kind of a licensing level. Then we have a Creo Answer Simulation, which has at the moment just one license level, but there will be some more with the Creo 10. They've been told to us. Then on the other hand, we have a Creo Flow Analysis for the CFD applications. And that comes with three different application uh, licensing levels. And then we have a generative solutions, uh, which comes with the two different licensing levels at the moment. So we have kind of a, let's say, a plenty of what to choose from. And it can be a, from time to time a bit difficult to reckon that what do you actually need. And uh, we try our best at this webinar to make it visible that what's what and uh, how do they differ and what might you need. So let's go for the Creo Answer Simulation then. What's new in there? So previously, we, it that came out with a few versions ago. And uh, what's been happening here is that usability enhancements are there. So capabilities of copying and pasting simulation objects from the model tree and uh, from the study to another study. So you can have multiple of them in the one kind of fun uh, model. And uh, then second thing is number of the uh, CPU cores can be uh, adjusted during the run. And then uh, let's say everything is a bit more easier to handle. And then we have a bit more warning trial labels here to just to highlight that something is not up to date or not really you know going as expected. Then one kind of a new thing is the bearing load. What does it mean that you can basically have a non constant uh, load height for your, let's say, circular geometry, like a holes or, pin, uh, let's say, shafts, which then enables you to have a bit better kind of a representation of the kind of a bearing or similar event. And uh, some limitations, of course, exist, like axial loads are not there. And uh, basically, this is applied only to solids at the moment. Then when it comes to result handling, we have a now uh, capability showing the deformed shape and undeformed shape and basically scale this you know the amount of the deformation if you want to do that then there's also possibility to do a simulation query live on the window to ask points click some points and ask what's the value in there so basically the result manipulation visualization is getting a bit easier at the moment uh, further on if you happen to put those simulation probes in there, which what, what I mean with that is those kind of annotations, which indicates a local value, like in here, it's a kind of deformation, or in here, it's a stress. You might see this flag in here. And previously, it was a bit hard to tell that, you know, if you make a multiple simulation runs, that if some of those basically were out outdated, so basically showing a wrong value. So nowadays we have a flagged out everything, but you have to rerun it in order to make the results to be on time. So hopefully that gives you a bit of kind of fun control of your results and uh, helps get guarantee that nobody is kind of fun looking for old results when you should basically rerun everything. Then we have something which is called inertial relief. It simply means that if you are having this kind of fun, let's say a link, basically, you have a, a kind of a mechanism attached it to from the three sides, maybe some, you know, dampers, maybe some, you know, cylinders, and it moves into space. 
it is sometimes quite hard to constrain that. But on the other hand, what you can do always is to just um, calculate the forces affecting to this one, and then you are kind of having a force balance on it, and then we just have to limit somehow the residual forces of and residual moments of. So what you can do today is to put that inertial relief on, and system will automatically generate the acceleration field so that that the, some of the forces are zero, and therefore we can calculate this without any kind of a constraints. And that, that has been also available, let's say, in Creo Simulate and other products for ages, but now it's also available in the Creo as a simulation. And then, as I kind of earlier kind of stated, that the shells are now there. What we have there is automatic shell pair detection, which means that if you just have geometry like this for in the solid you can say that let's say the church everything that is maximum of 10 millimeters thick and then system will automatically find the pairs that are matching and we're having a kind of a mature phase compression to create shells and then you can run the models in the shells rather than solids which of course makes it a much faster but then on the other hand you lose some details but uh, usually this is sufficient enough to make the shell model also, what we can do is do a mixed model, which means that we can mix up shells, beams, and solid elements together and uh, make the model kind of uh, reflect the, how do we say, required kind of a solution accuracy in the way that we want. So, that is what I'm about to show you next with the live software. Okay, I don't want to restart anything now. Let's go for two hours, remind me later. So in here we have pretty simple kind of a model. We have a one end plate. First we cut our, cut our a bit of licensing here. So let's go now. We have a plate, well, it's a beam basically. Then we have a end plate and then we have yet another end plate in here. My plan is what to do is to have this model in here as a solid and the rest of the stuff as a shell. So if you go for applications, create also simulation, what will happen is that you land in here, this kind of environment, which looks kind of pretty similar. What you have had, for example, in Creo Simulate earlier on, you have your kind of constraints, you have your new bearing load in here. And now what's new in here is that today we have, for example, review geometry. If you click that, you can see that okay some of things are solid if you click apply these are solid and when it comes to shells these are shells should you have a well surfaces they would have this color then on the other hand how do we connect these things together as you can see we have a bonded surfaces and bonded edges highlighted in a bit kind of a suan or magnetic color in here also in here so basically what you can do is bond these elements together then, should you mess this thing, you end up in the shell mess. As you can see, there's no thickness in here, even though original geometry had it. Since because thickness is kind of a numeral in this one, but on the other hand, in here we do have a volumetric thickness since this is solid elements. And when you go for results, let's go for displacement. Just activate. It. This is already pre-run kind of a thing, and you will see that okay, we have our deformations. If you want to scale your deformation, let's say five times, you really get the form structure in here. I don't want to have the auto scale door in here, or if you just want to play it back and forth. Let's put something like a two times and try to play it. You will see that it would gradually goes down, and yes, we can also adjust the speed of it with this one. So there's some new tools for you to play around. Was there anything else? Shell creation itself. Well, if you want to do shells, you can do them from the surfaces. You know, just click the surface, what you do with the surface modeling, and define that what is the material property and what is the thickness of the shell. On the other hand, shell pair, you are manually pointing out these are matching the pair, which is then compressed to mid surface. On the other hand, you can give out the number, and then system will automatically find all the matching geometry that might be. Then what else there might be? Well, from this point, I would say not much. From it comes to Creo answer simulation. 
these are pretty much all the new stuff. Then we jump back for a presentation. And go for a new application called Creo Simulation Live. So what's the difference between these two is that uh, Creo Answer Simulation, you really compute with your CPU, but with the Creo Simulation Live, you run the computation at the your display graphics card. And so they are a bit faster. And uh, in general, what we have here is temperature, you know, capabilities. You can do the uh, assigned temperatures and all that. And basically the physical phenomenon, what we try to simulate here is uh, temperature expansion. And you can do that in real time with uh, structural loading. So both of them at the same time. And you need a scale simulation lab plus to license to make this thing happen and only available as a steady state thermal, which means that you cannot basically vary the thermal things over time. Then the second thing we have in here is the uh, lattice geometry. So in the 3D printing, it's typical to have some kind of a lattice in the system, either kind of a beam-like or kind of a garage shape or something like that. And now if what we do here is just define that, okay, remove internal geometry from here. And if this happens to have a, that kind of a lattice in there, then it's possible to remove that from the computation domain, which means that then the flow has to go on this kind of a curly path from one end to another. And you can simulate then the results of, as you can see on the lower right corner. Further with Creo Simulation Live, what we can do today, as, as we can do in the basic Creo application, is split the surfaces so that in here, for example, we don't have to make a constraint to the whole surface. We can just use a part of the surface for the constraint, which then leads a bit better representation of the surroundings and therefore a bit better stress kind of related results. On the other hand, what is still kind of a future wear or promise wear is that at the Creo 9010, there will be contacts, which then, of course, will help us to kind of describe the surroundings even better, to have multiple pieces which kind of contact and are able to separate as well, should that be possible when it comes to force balance. So that gives you an, another edge to when it comes to using this Creo simulation live to make it even more realistic. And then, Basically, as a final note for the Creo Simulation Live, I will show a short demonstration about this fluid flow thing. We have this kind of a heat exchanger where the flow is coming in from the one end and relieving from the other. And then on the other hand, if you take a look at there is some kind of fun lattice in here, which then makes the flow go here and there to thus make it kind of efficiently kind of fun, uh, distribute the heat to the, these ribs. And this heat exchanger is getting up. That's how it works. So let's now show that. Where's my, that might be the one. And then we open our model. And as it has some lattice geometry, it will take a few seconds to open up. Now we got the model. So nothing specific in here, but then when you jump into Creo simulation live in a model, and just click live simulation. You will see that there's a one structural analysis, but there's a one fluid analysis made in here. In here, you could have this remove internal geometry button, which simply means that, okay, now we are taking care of all considering the lattice geometry in there. Then we have a boundary condition, which says outlet pressure is zero bar resisting and then you put one kilogram per second in, and then you have a general initial temperature in here. And basically everything is prepared for us to make it run. So we just click, you know, simulate. And if you consider how fast this is to the traditional CFD, well, let's think about first of all the meshing. It would take some time to mesh this thing. 
and do everything. But in here, we just wait for, let's say, a, a minute or something, and we are about to have an Intel results already. As you can see, the Intel results are now developing. The system is trying to find the stable kind of fun stationary velocity distribution in here. And we are about to have our results in here. Should you want to look at what's happening inside, you can click cut plane. And the trick of the trade in here is to just go for fluid objects from the smart filter and click the plane. Then you can get this arrow and track it so that it is actually in the middle of things. So you, what we can do is see what is happening inside here. As you can see, the fluid pattern here is getting quite complex. And then on the other hand, if you want to have a direction field, the same thing applies. If you just click it and then just track it, you can see kind of the swirls that where are we going? What, what is the direction of the fluid in here? And the swirls are shown quite nicely here as well. So basically enabling you to go through the structure. Let's close that one and go back for our PowerPoint presentation. Ooh, I swap again. So a few words about Creo welding. So on the previous kind of presentation, I showed you the same kind of slides, but repetition is sometimes good. What can be done today with the welding is that we do support kind of the trajectory paths export to the XML format so that this can be used from the used from the offline programming of the willing robots, so to speak. At the moment with the Creo 9, we support the, all the only the wheel, fillet wells, but basically all the types and enough kind of attributes of it. But on the other hand, later on there will be some other welding type supported as well. Then on the other hand, support of the exporting the mass properties out for some other use for simulation use or something like that is possible today with Trio. You can export everything out by the CSV or common separated values or the XML format. And then back to simulation topic a bit more. What we have is Creo flow analysis next. Well, and that is basically a you know, typically CPU-based application. We do have a three different license level here. And uh, if you think about flow analysis basic, we have basic everything, what let's say basic engineering is, we have a heat transfer in here, we have a turbulence models in here. Should you wanna find out what are the particles lands, if you have a radiation, thermal radiation at your model, if you have a multiple, let's say gases like uh, carbon dioxide and air and su such, if you wanna see how are those fractions distributed over the fluid domain, that's also possible with plus license. And also if you have some moving sliding meshing, which means that you wanna simulate some kind of an uh, impeller or fan, or maybe some piston that's possible with Creo analysis, flow analysis plus. And then if you go a bit more advanced kind of topics like cavitations, you might have a multi-phases in there. You might have a multi-components and dynamics. Those are possible with premium license level. So it is not a single kind of a product at, at that. So you always have to kind of take care of, uh, take a look at the level of licensing, what is required for the job, so to speak. But nevertheless, let's look at the enhancements what we have in here. So with the Creo 8 and earlier versions, what you had to do is to have just have a single project per assembly file. And that is a bit limiting factor. So at with the Creo 9, you have a capabilities, have a multiple project per assembly file, which of course, and it, it gave you some flexibility to have a multiple, let's say scenarios in the one, just the one file. And yes, of course you can activate the one and what you want to have. So you have a, let's say in here, initial project, then you have test one, test two, test three, of course, only one can be active and let's have a simulation. And should you just want to vary the project a bit, you can, of course, copy and paste or duplicate the existing projects as well. So it gives you a bit more leverage on that. Then the view panel. 
it would help you to uh, kind of a control what do you see what kind of results do you want to see the grid lines from, from the from the mesh do you want to see some you know transparent geometry you, you know which side of surface or cut, 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 cutting plane you want to see so kind of a general post processing is now basically well written so there's a new set of tools for everyone in there to make the result handling a bit easier Then what else? The units previously the units were a bit, you know, let's say interesting since uh, we didn't really see any units anywhere. So we just had to know that uh, since you have a millimeters and kilograms, then therefore the derived units are such. Or then you might also, let's say, in meshing, you might give have to give out uh, measurements in meters, which then requires that you have the multiple leading zeros in there. But today we can, you know, we support the units, which makes it much easier for the people to put in the proper numbers and get in the cor correct results as well. Then on the other hand, if you look at in this case, uh, the fluid domain, and so basically this is external flow, velocity comes in here with certain temperature, and then we have a resisting, you know, pressure in here. You could actually see these things on your screen all the time while defining a simulation with the proper units as well. So it's easier to put the model, you know, set up the model properly so that it actually simulates what you want and you are not making mistakes with units. Then post-processing, as I tried to tell you earlier, the basically post-processing is rewritten, all kind of dialogues and the controls handling the results are now changed to make it easier to understand it you know or make it easier to manipulate the results and create different kind of a result as well so in here you can maybe see the pressure distribution and here the velocity distribution for your design what else do we have Legend levels can be controlled as well if you want to you know limit the maximum value minimum value so that the color gradients are let's say a bit sharper on the area that you want, you can limit them. And on the other hand, the units of them as well. And uh, there are a lot of kind of fun, let's say easier approachable controls than previously was. So post-processing is basically rewritten for the Creo 9. And then in here as well, the lattice geometry is supported. They are shown here as a hybrid body. So if you go in there and look at the geometry and you want to include that, uh, let's say, a lattice in here as we have, then you just have to have a hybrid body as a yes, and then fluid volume will be automatically generated to take that account. Otherwise, you don't get anything in here, which is not really the kind of a simulation you want to have. What else do we have? Oh. A kind of a cross use of existing Creo parametric capabilities and the Creo flow analysis is that if you happen to have a behavioral modeling extension, which basically is a geometry optimization extension for the Creo parametric, where you can, let's say, study that if I change these dimensions or these parameters, what will happen to outcome parameters? And then you can basically minimize the mass or minimize some other function or maximize some other function. So just try to find out if something is feasible or can you do, or let's say change these dimensions and get that one result, let's say. But today what's been happening is that uh, with the Creo flow analysis, we are now able to create parameters from the geometry, but on the other hand, we are able to generate some output parameters like, a, let's say, a pressure or something like that, or velocity or mass flow from that analysis and use them in the behavioral modeling. And as a simple kind of example here is that if you have this simple ball valve, if you have it, let's say, partially open, if you just want to run the pressure of the inlet from the one bar to six bar, and then you just want to know that what is volumetric flow over it, you can create an analysis using the Creo flow analysis functionality, but also using the behavioral modeling extension. And then the behavioral modeling extension is capable of plotting out you the sensitivity plot of what is the outcoming flow cubic meters per second 
when the pre input pressure varies over the from the one bar to six bar. So it's a kind of a, let's say, handy tool to find out what is the optimal spot or if something exists on particular kind of uh, capabilities or how much should I basically change something. So if I want to, let's say, have exactly 4.5, you know, bars, let's see what is the flux in there or other way around. If you want to have, let's say, 770 is the liters per second in here or seven liters per second, then you have to have two bars in there, basically the pressure difference over the bar. And then the last one I want to speak about is generative topology optimization. This is a new module from the few versions ago. New things what we have here is that previously what we did was basically look at the strain energy and optimize the things with that. But the problem was that stresses could go way up above the yield point, and uh, let's say the design propositions that what system gave to you were kind of nice, but on the other hand, they were exceeding the allowable stresses. So today, what we have is basically minimize the mass with the safety factor, and this is safety factor against the yielding. So it simply means that. Let's say the stress is in here, as you can see, around 300 megapascals, if you say a factor of two. So we have assumed so this could maybe hold a 600 megapascals without breaking. So minimize the mass by doing that. So try to make as smooth geometry as possible, but keep the safety factor against yielding for the two and make it as light as possible. And then the system is basically finding out the solutions within this solution envelope so that these areas are kept and please reduce everything to minimum. What else there is? Previously we had a structural analysis only. Now there's a model as well. So for some applications, vibration is important. So that if even though you would have a nice, uh, let's say, geometry which will hold the loads, but if it starts to vibrate, it's basically useless. So we can also today uh, make a first or second let's say model frequency or model shape so that uh, you have a limitations in there so that the vibration studies are also kind of a concern while designing these geometries what else there is then as a ease of use functionality or basically let's say let's make it let's not waste the computational effort is that we can run the initial simulation which simply means that okay, system will just run it basically once and just post you the results so that you can see that okay, I have put my let's say stresses correctly or forces correctly. I have my boundary conversion correctly, so the model is behaving according to expectations. Before you say to system, okay, let's start to optimize because sometimes optimizations can be taking an hour or more, so it would be a bit kind of fun, let's say useless to make the computer run for the simulation that is not really the one that you made due to some mistake of, of the inputting the parameters or inputting the constraints or forces. Then as a new kind of uh, last functionality in the presentation is that we have a ball constraints also available for the spherical surfaces so that the translation is fixed but the rotations are free and this of course enables us to kind of describe some of the movements a bit better and thus getting a kind of a proper description of the what's happening in the model and the, the optimization as well and then let's try to show you some of that as well if i just still remember what i have show not the file open also working directory uh, i think it's just this one then we go for i have one funny number series here somewhere I have a few models in here. Let's say what we, what we can do in here. So if you look at the model in here, it's pretty much just the design envelope. If we go for this design items, you will see that there's a multiple bodies. There's one imported, there's something preserved, which means that these areas you must basically uh, keep. So uh, looking like that. And then they have made a basically a 
starting geometry so this is the volume you have to keep yourself in and then at the end of the day we have exclude body in here which means that you cannot go on this area so basically it's a cut against that one but let's hide that as well so if you go for application and you go for generative design you will see that somebody has been doing some work here already you have classified the geometry for starting body or the, basically the volume to search for then on the other hand preserved are those blue areas and then we have exclude one in here which is not even shown let's show it for the few seconds you cannot go on this area at all it's just hidden for the simplicity and then what we have here is a few cylinder counter for coordinate system few planar so to keep it in basically bolt it in and then what you have here is forces just one force on that pin and let's go for dash and create areas in here actually clicking in from here and as you can see default is maximize the stiffness but this doesn't take care of the stresses but if you want to say maximize the mass you have a safety factor on the play based on the material data should you want to have some additional constraints like a building direction for the 3d printing maybe parting line maybe something that can be machined from the one side or if you want to have a symmetry or maybe the radius in here for the kind of geometry that comes you can have all of these or just one of these as additional kind of limitations more you add of these of course it, computation times gets longer and longer then the materials you can have you know simulations just one material by the time but if you go for these cloud-based applications then you can have uh, basically multiple materials here at least but at the moment i'm just doing to minimize the mass with safety factor of two And now basically everything is defined and then if you say study settings of course how kind of a small details you want to see it depends on the mesh size and to the time factor limitations we have for today's presentation let's go with the easy easy one so and now i say just to optimize and try to calculate it while we look for that if we have any questions at the moment do we have carolina any questions at the moment while the computer is running no we don't have any questions at the moment nevertheless thank you for that so as you can see the geometry is gradually forming you still have some funny things in here but optimization is just one percent gone and system tries to cut down the volume as much as possible while keeping the safety factor at the level of two and this will take let's say a minute or two to run through but the idea with the German, uh, generative topology optimization is that you can have a multiple load cases and you can optimize your design against something and then you get a fully kind of fun function of a 3d model which you can use as a, a try, try, as, as is or basically use as a base for your design for the exact component that you might want to have but it kind of does the job out of autonomous and you don't really have to care about anything at the moment just deal with what there are limitations and then computer will take off care of the computing and finding out the optimal shape for you and sometimes the results can be quite a surprising that oh you can do it like that as well but enough limitations you can basically do the things with the let's say uh, like a sheet metal things or something like that and uh, sometimes it's good to understand that this is not necessarily manufacturable geometry as is but you still can use this as a base of kind of fun designing your own component component and uh, consider the manufacturing limitations and all that while you design you just get the overall shape it is a generative topology optimization do we have any other questions not yet anything no not yet we're waiting here in suspense for you. <laughs> well, since I run out of my slide deck, so we can, of course, take a look at till the end of how this does go forming. As you can see, these all kind of surroundings are getting have nice colors around them. The colors, let's say, like that, not colors, colors. And the it, geometry is gradually shaping up. You still have some funny lumps in here. But nevertheless, it's getting smoother and smoother. And here's happening something funny. There's a hole. Let's see what will happen on that one.
and now we have a second hole. So this starts to look a bit like a, let's say, organic like a bone or something like that. But my first guess is that the non-regular, uh, let's say a regular uh, mechanical engineer wouldn't at the first go land on the structure like this. So it gives you kind of a hint about that. So we got microfluids when it's come to question in here. I would say no, but it depends now on your scale of what do you mean exactly. So I got the question from if the microfluids are supported in CFD that is creeping, you know, around very small structures, and I would say no. I will try to gather some info about the, that requirement and uh, get back to you, Patrick, about the, about this. And I have done something like seventy percent of the simulation. And as you can see, the geometry is gradually forming. Now we have a large void in or opening in here, but also in here. Oh, it's second opening is coming up. So we're credibly limiting the mass. We started around one kilo and now we are around 400 grams. But maybe as you can see, this, as this will take something like maybe five minutes to compute, if you have a multiple variables and all that, then there's a possibility to send to cloud with the license extension and make the cloud do the computing if you have a multiple kind of design, like a material has multiple load cases, multiple kind of criteria you might want to have, then the cloud platform solution also exists. So you don't have to basically overload your local laptop. And in here, if you look at the very close look, you will see that there's a 2.009, the safety factor at the moment, computation has been running for six minutes. And this is the allow we're using, and the criteria are as such defined. And you might see a small, small gradual changes when the system is optimizing and optimizing everything in here. Any other questions from the audience while we watch this movie? No other questions at the moment, but feel free to ask any questions. Now is the time to really interrogate Miko here and put him on the spot. <laughs> so if you have any questions, put them forward. Yeah. Well, now I got it luckily finished, so I don't have to just sit and wait. So <laughs> thank you, Carolina, for that encouragement. As you can see, this geometry is kind of a organic looking suitable, you know, especially for the 3D printing and or maybe the investment casting or something like that. But then this is just the finished thing. Then on the other hand, if you want to see the simulation results about, okay, what is my stress level? Let's go for Mecca so it's understandable. So there is something like, a, if you click that one, there's around here at the one kind of a con, very close to constraint, you have 120 Mecca which is then guaranteeing as a safety factor of the Two for you, and here you have a bit less than around 100, 100 megapascal stress level in here. Also, same thing in here. But other than that, we are something like on the 60 megapascal level, which is quite okay for the design like this. And then, if you want to, you can just click generate the design, and let's hope that we can make this thing run. So, current part, let's go for these kind of things. So in the system, this is really at the moment a tessellated geometry, looking like a STL model, even though it's visualized very nicely for you. Then what we do is just say to generate the design. 
and what system will do is push it out as a let's say a kind of fire stale looking like also including the bodies that you might want to need and then tries to make a kind of a mapping using that what it what was the feature called free freestyle maybe they use a freestyle feature to map on top of it in order to create a c2 continuous surface set for you which then basically gives you a total 3d body as a solid, as a solid geometry And now again, it's time to interrogate Mikko if you want to push some questions at the chat. Well, I think, uh... Go ahead. He's uh, not that, not that uh, harmful. <laughs> <laughs> so again, as you can see now, what we have here already the results. We have the solid part for the for this particular problem, and of course the question is, okay, how do I manufacture this? Well, 3D printing maybe. If you have, uh, let's say, more, uh, uh, let's say, limiting uh, manufacturing methods like a sheet metal or something like that, then you could also consider that, okay, if I weld something like this kind of a piece in here, then I may just have to use a kind of arc shape piece of sheet metal, which has a cost of thickness, of course. Or if you want to mill it from above, then you just basically neglect all the voids in here. So it's kind of a starting point for your geometry optimization. Then at some point, hopefully we get a bit more manufacturing constraints here that are giving us a, uh, even, even kind of a better solution for this, but in order to find out most efficient shapes for some you know, mechanical uh, load cases or vibration load cases, this generative topology optimization is pretty nice tool for that. Should you not want to ask any more questions, then I say I'm done. Fantastic. There are no more questions. So thank you so much for today's webinar, Miko. Last thank one. Thank you everyone for participating in this one. Yes. And if you missed, in case you missed any of our previous webinars, they are available on PLS Vision's on-demand webinars. So thank you very much for everybody for participating. Bye. Bye.